Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Arnold. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always love interviewing one of our REI Radio students, particularly ones that have come in and you're just seeing traction, you know, in the first 30 to 60 days. And so today we have Graylin Stewart on. And if you're tuning in today, you're going to hear, you know, what his experience has been, you know, what his dollar per dollar return is, the uh, deals he's closed, what he's got in the pipeline. I mean, we're going to break these uh, KPIs down today for you because, again, what we're seeing now is just kind of student after student coming in, getting the radio up and going, getting that ball rolling, and then talking about how to actually get it going even faster and uh, reinvesting and getting more and more radio stations. So, Graylin, what's up, buddy? Welcome to the show, man. Glad to have you. Hey, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So for those that don't know you, give us a quick snapshot. How long you've been in the game, where you're at, and a little bit about the strategy you're focused on. Sure. Uh, so I, I discovered wholesaling in September of 2018. So right at two years now. And, um, you know, I own a marketing company. So I was already kind of familiar with, you know, dealing with the sales and marketing aspect, which this whole business is all of that, basically. Um, so I just jumped right in. As soon as I discovered wholesaling, uh, I was like, man, that's exactly what I need to be doing. So I started marketing right away. I had a website built within the first couple of days, sent out postcards because that's a lot what we do in our marketing company is postcards. Uh, and we, I ended up getting seven deals my very first month. I actually closed on seven deals in October of How 18. How did you <laughs> close on seven deals? Yeah. Every way back it up. Yeah, it was what crazy. Did you to close on seven deals in the first uh, uh, month. Like, how did you? Do I know, that? it was nuts. So, so I discovered wholesaling. Like, it was probably close to mid September, maybe early to mid September. So, I had marketing out by mid, by mid September for sure. And I was trying to plan it to where the postcards would hit on a Monday, right? Because me and my wife, we had we had a trip planned to Vegas. So, long story short, uh, I was getting calls on the Saturday in Vegas. The postcards hit early. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no, this is this is a call. I was kind of nervous because it was like my first seller call. Right. And I was like, I, we got to go to the room, you know, so yeah, uh, I ran to the room. The Texas Hold'em table and go up to the yeah. room. Yeah, it was crazy. We were just walking down the strip and I was like, I started getting calls. So I'm like, I, we got to go to the room real fast. You know, I spent money on this. I'm going to make it work. So anyways, I locked up two deals over the phone in Vegas for <laughs> Oklahoma City. Uh, my first day I got calls, you know, basically. And, um, but yeah, so uh, once we got back home, we got other stuff coming in and I ended up getting seven deals locked up before the end of September. And our first one closed October 3rd. So it was a pretty quick turnaround and we closed on seven that month. We did like 72 grand. Yeah. My very first month. What, what did that do for you mentally? Again, people are listening right now and they're like, wow, what, I mean, you came out of the gates just fine. Yeah. What shifted? in you, whether that was in your head or like, you know, emotionally, what happened when that Yeah. Happened? I mean, it was pretty awesome because my marketing company on a good month would bring in 50 and way less profit margin. You know what I mean? Uh, so it was, it was cool. Cause I was like, man, this is exactly what I thought it would be. I wasn't surprised cause I knew I could do it cause it's already what I've been doing just for different things, you know, as opposed to having real estate as a vehicle. So, uh, but it was like, it was definitely a light bulb. Like, this is it. You know, this is, this is what I'm going to be doing that was forever. Like, the moment you know I mean? you knew, like I, I can't go back. Something yeah. has changed. It's like that old saying, yeah. you stretch something, you know, far enough, it will never return to that same position. You know, yep. just can't go back. So I love that. Yeah. So people always love to know, like, so far, like before radio, what has kind of been your bread and butter strategy? Where most of your opportunities has been coming from? Yeah, so, you know, I started out as direct mail exclusively because that's what I already knew. Um, but but I did the first four months or so. I mean, I was doing 70 plus every single month. But I was like, okay, I got to I gotta somehow figure out how to scale this, right? So I went down that path trying to figure that out. I added cold callers and that kind of thing. That's really all I did. I did a little bit of RVM, you know, initially uh, the, after the first couple months. But um, it took me a year to, to really get down the right path, <laughs> really, until really early in 2020, when I tried to, I really figured it out to where I had the systems in place and, the, and people started getting people in place, you know, to help. Um, so going forward since January of this year, really, it's been 
uh, a lot of Facebook, RVM, SMS, cold calling, still doing direct mail, but more targeted. Uh, so not just blast list, um, that kind of thing. Um, and also we're getting referrals, you know, here and there, do some JVing a little bit, but for the most part, it was RVM, SMS, cold call, Facebook, and, and then I, and added radio. That as well, you know, as I talked to a lot of people, <clears throat> I um, mean, you know, I was just doing another podcast with Paul Lazell. You know, it's the foundational five, right? Yeah. A lot of people are doing cold calling, RVMing, text blasting, some type of digital marketing, right? Yep. Um, along with. And we do SEO, obviously, yeah. because we have marketing companies. So we do that. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, man, let, let's hop in. Let's talk about this radio thing, right? You're a guy yeah. that's been out there. You've got a lot of marketing strategies. I mean, heck, you got a marketing background, right? right. So this makes this podcast even more interesting. What first attracted you to radio? Why give it a try? What were the qualities you're like, you know what? This is something I think I'd like to see how this works in my business. Yeah. I mean, I saw one of your podcasts this is how I first reached out to you guys. And I was like, and that, it makes sense what you say. You know, it's like, there's no competition on radio. I think there is one other guy on the station I'm on, I'm on but you know, that's really it. Whereas SMS, everybody does, you know, RVMs, everybody does cold calling same thing so um that's what intrigued me i was like okay i don't even really care what it costs if there's no competition then it's a no-brainer for yeah, me it feels I mean? like hey let me do something where there's virtually no competition yep. and we've talked about this again again and i think grayland as a marketing guy you would agree with this it doesn't matter how good you are at working the marketing strategy if it's saturated it's yeah. going to be really difficult to get the ROI because at some point it's just going to be hard to pull that out because the competition level just throws everything off. Have you found that to be the case? Yeah, that's definitely true. Obviously the more saturated it is, the more difficult it is. However, uh, if you have a good team in place and you really do your follow-up like you should, you're still going to get deals. So that's what's cool is I'm still doing those things and we still get deals from those every month, but I'm glad we added radio because, you know, we got more, you know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Cause I'm always looking for how can I add a few more deals per month, you know, cause I've already maxed out all these other channels, you know, basically. So what can I do to keep traction, keep gaining? And I hope you guys, if you're listening heard Graylin on that saying, Hey, if, if you're working something right now, that's highly competitive or saturated, don't throw it away. He's saying, focus on the efficiency, focus on the speed because you're going to win that game based on speed and great follow-up. So I think yeah. that's just some wisdom being shared right there as well, which yeah. is great. Now, everybody wants to know, like setting up radio, again, you've set up a lot of different things. I always love this question. Scale of one to 10, 10 being super hard, one being easy. How difficult was it to set up radio, this whole program piece? So setting up the whole concept behind it is super easy, actually, but getting on there to get the pricing that you really want, you know, we're always looking for deals, you know, cause that's just our nature, right? Um, so getting the, the right deal was the hardest part, but actually getting it all set up, you know, was super easy. Yeah. Like I, I literally recorded my ad one day and two days later I was live and then we got a call the same day I was live the first day, you know, so. Absolutely. That part was super easy. And then integrating that into our podio, you know, easier than any other channels because there's not all these extra things you have to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you're listening again, we always like to tell you like the real story of radio. I always just say there's one hurdle Graylin with radio and that's negotiating with these radio stations because yep. we're teaching, you know, our students how to buy radio like you buy your real estate at a deep discounted price. Can everyone run out and buy properties at, you know, 70 cents on the dollar? No, that requires right. some skill level. We're doing the same thing on the radio side as well. So yeah. you get obviously your radio set up. Um, let's talk about the cost. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how much are you paying for radio per month? We're paying 1200. How many ads per month are you getting with $1,200? I get a hundred. So how much yeah. is that per 60 second spot? It's like 20 bucks, I think, <laughs> roughly. Really yeah. expensive, right? So yeah. can you, again, this is what I learned about radio as I was doing it. Would you have ever imagined you could have got on a radio station, you know, and advertise a 60 second spot for 20 bucks? It's still crazy. No way. Yeah. 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 And supposedly I've heard that there's even deals like that on TV, but I don't know. 
I might yeah. look into it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If there is, make it happen. So, yeah. you know, if you listen, we always say the thing that pushes people away from things like radio and TV as an assumption is that it's not affordable. And I can yeah. tell you, you know, Grayland's at 1200. Our student range for the first station is between $500 a month to 2000. I would say that the majority of our students fall within that range. That's really reasonable to get up on that first station. And then of course, to start closing deals and snowball that into more stations, which is the goal. So Absolutely. you've been live now for 60 days, correct? Yep. And yep. you and I were talking and in 60 days, you've gotten 34 calls. Is that correct? Yep. 34 okay. actual calls. Yeah. And then again, I wanted to break down some numbers because here's the thing I admire about Graylin. I was talking to him. He literally was looking off the Excel, off his KPIs. I was like, this guy knows his numbers. So we're going to talk KPIs because that's sure. the way I am. I love tracking everything. So yeah. if we do the math on there, you're spending $1,200 a month, multiply that by two, that's 2,400. Divide mm -hmm. that by the call volume. Your cost per lead right now is 70 bucks. Yep. Yeah. 70 bucks. And that's every lead that includes the people that are like, do you have anything for rent? You know, it's, it's all those. Yeah. So, every call. So yeah. it's $70. Yeah. When we say cost per lead, we're almost saying cost per call here. Yep. Um, it's interesting. Mine in Dallas is $72. Um, so you and I are running pretty close on that as well. So yeah. within this time frame of 60 days, how many deals have you locked up under contract? We have six under contract currently and one other one that's on the way right now. So okay. this, uh, what was, I love this, by the way. What do you call a contract on the way? It's a cow. <laughs> yeah. So we could just talk to our team like, hey, we got any cows? You know, they're like, yeah, I got one or two or whatever, you know. So I told Graylin, I was like, I'm going to use that language in my culture. <laughs> it's, it's cool, man. It's like, how many yeah. cows you got? Contracts on the way. I'm always yeah. excited when I hear something, you know, that someone hasn't said before. So, again, if you're building culture, um, these little things matter. So, six deals of those, one is closed out yeah. already, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you have another. Uh, two deals that are closing. One is 20K, the other one a little bit smaller at 7K. But yep. we were taking everything that you produced uh, in the first 60 days, and we figured conservatively that your dollar per dollar return is $13. So let me explain that if you're new. The way to track marketing is to know your dollar per dollar return. If I spend a dollar, how many dollars do I get back? I always tell people with radio to expect three to four dollars, which is fundamentally tripling to quadrupling your investment. Graylin right now, because he's got such a small ad spend in his market, he's getting $13, right, Graylin, so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> I'll take it. That's, pretty good. <laughs> that's a really good return to start out one to 13. Now, I will say this, we want to check in with Graylin a few months from now. Uh, I think that will drop a little bit, but I think you'll be way above me. I'm $3 and 50 cents in Dallas, which is great. Um, but man, with your ad spend being as little as it is, um, I think you're definitely going to uh, stay above probably $4 pretty easily as well. So Absolutely. that's awesome. Yeah. So I have another question for you. Now that you've set up radio and again, you're 60 days in, Anything else that's happened that you've liked, you know, as a characteristic, like some people are like, I love that it's set it and forget it. Like, I don't have to worry about yeah. it. Others are like, I love that. I feel like I'm becoming an authority in my market. Like vendors are calling me and people are calling me to do business. Anything that you've seen yet in the first 60 days? Yeah. I mean, as far as a marketing standpoint, I do love that it's set it and forget it because that's the hardest part about being consistent in what you do in marketing, you know, because, you always got to set it up for the next month or whatever, whether it's direct mail or RVMs or whatever. So I do love that because it's you, you record the ad and they play it <laughs> and you're done. You just yeah. wait for the calls to come in. You know what I mean? So yeah, I love I that the best. The best way, Graylin, you're a marketing guy to be consistent mm -hmm. is to automate the consistency. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And again, you can't really automate, you know, direct mail, things like that because they require a lot of tweaking. Yep. Um, but the thing about radio is it's automated because we're outsourcing all the work to the radio company. They're responsible for playing the ads. I mean, Graham, let me ask you this. Do you have to do anything else other than answer the phone and just pay your bill monthly? Like seriously. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't even answer the phone, so I literally, <laughs> I, and I don't even pay the bill because it's auto draft. You know what I mean? So it's a hundred percent automated for me. So it's great. <laughs> you All just right. dropped my point, which which I love. So this is yeah. you are actually truly set and forget at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's interesting. I want to hit on that point. If you're not answering the phone yourself, um, who's answering these calls? Yeah, I have two acquisition managers that take all the inbound leads, uh, whether it's calls or Facebook leads or whatever it is. So okay. they're responsible for that. So what has been their fill on the first 60 days comparing this lead volume to something like direct mail? Have they said anything to you about the quality of the lead or, hey, yeah. we're not getting hate calls or what? <laughs> I mean, they definitely know that those are hot leads, you know what I mean? Because I mean, on occasion you get one that, Hey, you got something for rent or whatever, but for the most part, it's somebody that's ready to sell their house and they trust you because you're on the radio. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not someone reaching out to you cold by email, text or RVM or direct mail. This is actually people wanting to talk to you. So that's what's cool. So you find that you're starting at a different place, maybe further down the know me, like me, trust me oh, yeah. road than you are with the other sources, right? Absolutely, yeah. How much further do you feel like you're down that road with the radio lead versus, let's say, something that's you yeah. know, Google call or text? What's the difference? Yeah, there? I would say here's a good way to, that I would uh, say it is, you know, because on the average deal that we get, we probably follow up 12 to 15 times to get a contract on radio it's probably a, a third to half of that. Really? You know, as far, yeah. Just because, you know, you've already kind of skipped half of those steps there to know who you are and trust who you are and they reached out to you. You know what I mean? So yeah. Absolutely. I would say that our, yeah, it, it probably takes maybe six follow-ups. So that's great, which then frees up your system and your time because you're not mm -hmm. having to do as much follow-up to get this deal yep. back. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. No. And again, you and I were talking about just efficiency by nature. And you know, a lot of you are listening, a lot of people have talked to me like, hey, I want to expand my marketing strategy, but I don't want to feel like I launch an entirely new job position when I do that. And so what Grayla and I are saying is we're talking through this is the great thing about radio, it's set and forget it. But on top of that, right, it's just a lot less stress on the system overall. But that may yeah. be a good way to do it. Like maybe I like to say like it's pretty low maintenance versus something that would be high maintenance. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Very cool, man. So what are you thinking, Grant? Again, I know you're 60 days in, but where do you potentially want to go with radio? You think you want to add on more stations, kind of sit where you're at. Again, I'm sure your wheels are starting to spin a little bit. What, what do you think your next plan of action is? Yeah, I mean, I would love to add more stations, you know, because that, again, that is the hardest part is negotiating these deals. But hopefully, as time goes on, I'll have stations reach out to me. And then yeah. maybe I'll have the upper hand, you know, as far as negotiating goes. So yeah, I'll add as many as I can. I mean, I'm definitely not afraid to spend money. I want to spend a lot of money because I know I'm going to get that money back. So <laughs> yeah, I'm all exactly. about that. Yeah. The odds are, are definitely in your favor. And again, I, I want to speak to that, Graylin. You're not there yet. But you know, I, I recently uh, interviewed Mitch Kaluzzi. Um, he was on a previous podcast, I, if I remember correctly, somewhere around 11 to 12 stations in his market. Nice. Um, Joe Terrio um, was another guy interviewed in REI Radio. I believe he, somewhere I can't remember, like 15, if I remember correctly. Those guys have told me, which is the same at, where I'm at, is at this point, don't really call radio stations. Um, at that point, you're being heard all mm -hmm. over your market. They call you. And I love what Mitch says. It's like, I hold the trump card. Yeah. I have the authority at that point because they initiated the call. They're now calling me to ask me if I would consider advertising on their station. Again, that's starting at a much different position than that first yeah. station in which you're like, Hey, I'm Graylin. I'm interested. And they're like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to tell you is just give it a little bit of time um, as your message gets out there, as you get on another couple of stations. And before you know it, they'll be knocking on your door. Uh, and you'll, you'll, again, we always say the stations can sometimes be a little bit cocky. Graylin, you'll be able to yeah. be a cocky one. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I mean, it's just like the leads that's coming in. You know, you're skipping the steps. It's just reversed. With the yeah. radio stations, you're skipping all those steps, you know, in this case. So. 
That'd the cool. tables will turn. The tables will turn. Absolutely. So if you're listening, right, and you're getting ready for, again, this is business planning time. We're now in October. Um, yep. If you're not, I'd be telling you, man, in fourth quarter, uh, we start our business planning so that we have our plan done. We do everything we need to do to be able to execute and get everything ready to follow through with that plan come 2021. So I always want to plant that seed, be doing your business planning in October. Um, okay. And you're trying to decide what you're going to do. Radio is the way to go. Here's the other thing I would say, Graylin, too, and I always remind our students, we're coming out of a very challenging season and you're hearing this data coming out of, let's remind ourselves of one of the more challenging years that we've had, right? Yeah. This has not been a normal year. So I just remind people, can you imagine 2021 when things are back to normal? We, again, we got elections going on right now, mm -hmm. Graylin. You know, you got COVID this year, all of those type of things. And we're talking about you getting a one to 13 return during yeah. the midst of a crazy time. So now is the time for radio. So again, book a call, find out if your market's open. Again, we run exclusivity, but go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio. Again, wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio. Book a call, come into this community. And Graylin, you're in the alumni with this as well. We want to take yep. this way further than radio. We want to work with our students past the point of really moving them from being entrepreneurs uh, in the sense of working in the business to entrepreneurs that work on the business, really turning them into businesses. And Graylin, you're kind of already like that. You're not even taking the calls, which I think is great. So wrapping up, Graylin, someone's listening going, man, I've, you know, I heard about this a couple months ago. This has now been the third or fourth one. Should I make this decision? Like, what would you tell someone that may be on the fence on, hey, is this radio a potentially good marketing channel to add to my tool belt? What would you tell them? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, absolutely. It's worth it, obviously. Um, you know, your first deal more than pays for it and you're getting, you know, infinity returns from there on, you know. So it's definitely worth it especially if you can get in now while your city is open, you know, so you don't have tons of competitors, which is one of the great things I loved about it. Uh, they won't get saturated, you know, like a lot of other things do. So, uh, and a lot of times if you do hear other competitors come on later, you just know that they paid a lot more than you <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. because they don't know how to negotiate it. Right. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? They're so. copycats way over yep. paying what we pay for. That's kind of our secret yep. sauce. Really, and I love to show that. And uh, they're going to go out of business because they don't know how to buy radio like we do. For so, sure. well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Graylin, thanks for coming on. I can tell hey, thank you. you're a savvy guy. Um, you're running this thing like a business. And, of course, you got in with radio, did what you need to do, executed on it. Now you got it up. And now we're going to talk about how to snowball this thing for you. Yes, sir. So, to the rest of you guys, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, we will talk to you soon when we add more value. Talk to you later.